Hello, good morning. A very warm welcome to our service today, our communion service, which we're streaming live from St. Bride's Church. Uh, Laura here, the team vicar, and I have with me uh, Lily, our chaplain to students. She's going to be sharing with us this morning a little bit about why she loves St. Bride so much. And, uh, and we've also got Louis on tech and also giving us a reading this morning. So it's a really warm welcome. Um, the litter you should be pinned to the, the Facebook page if you want to follow along with us. And uh, we're really glad to welcome you here to our worship this morning. So I'm going to begin actually by sharing a little bit about St. Bride. Because um, if you're new like me, you might not know that much about St. Bride. St. Bride also has a few names. St. Bridget uh, and Ephraid. I think I'm saying that right. Um, but this St. Bride was one of the patron saints of Ireland. She's best known for her charity, miracles and lavish hospitality. She shares her name with a Celtic goddess and it may have been that she was originally a high priestess before converting to Christianity. One of the symbols of the goddess and of St. Bridget is a perpetual fire. So hopefully that theme of fire you'll notice in today's liturgy coming through. Tr tradition has it that St. Mel, Bishop of Arda, ordained her as a bishop. When questioned, Mel responded that she alone uh, of the abbess of Kildare would be a bishop, but her successors would continue to have a bishop's jurisdictional authority. Indeed, they did. The other bishops sat at the feet of Bridget's successors until the Synod of Kells ended it in 1152. Bridget's double monastery at Kildare was built at a location sacred to the goddess. Its perpetual fire kept burning in Bridget's memory and was extinguished in 1540 with the monastery's dissolution. So that just gives you a sense of who Bridget Bride was. Um, and now we're going to begin with a prayer. In the glow of the spirit's light, in the presence of the underlying flame, we gather to hear the stories that come alive again. As Moses stood before the burning bush and heard the mystery of your nameless name, we gather to unlearn what we think we know. As women and men received the gift of the spirit, freeing voices long divided, we gather to share what is common to all. So now I'm going to invite Lily to come and light our special St. Bride candle and share a bit about that. Hello everyone. Um, so here we have um, the Glastonbury Unity candle. And um, it was pointed out to me this morning that we have some beautiful art by a local artist called Leroy, just up here, which depicts um, St. Joseph of Arimathea. Um, which is a really lovely coincidence, um, because I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this candle. The Glastonbury Unity Candle is a candle representing the Interfaith Community Initiative of Glastonbury Town. The town is a holy pilgrimage to so many, and it has been lit each night throughout lockdown. The flame representing the flame of peace. This candle is infused with herbs from the holy bond which is said to have grown from the staff of Joseph of Arimathea upon visiting Glastonbury. So we light this candle, remembering our inner flame and the fire of St. Bridget. And now we say our prayer, a song of fire. This is fire, speaking in tongues, crossing the borders of a nation and language. This is fire, sharing in common, uprooting the structures of racism as well. This is fire, a passion for new life, communities of honesty and justice. This is fire, spirit poured out, on all our different human bodies. This is fire, 
the visions of the, of the young, the ardent dreaming of the old. This is fire, slavery overthrown, and every child of God a prophet. This is fire, fullness of life, and the pleasure of God in our flesh. Glory to the God in the lifting air. Glory to the God in the, in the heat of the sun. Glory to God in the water's flow. Glory to God in the darkness of the earth. Glory to God in all creation. And now we're going to have our first song. So that was a special recording uh, just for us from Martin Fuller of uh, Be Thou My Vision. Uh, we're going to pray now our collect for some bride. Merciful God, 
origin and reward of all charity. You called St. Bridget to teach the new commandment of love. Through her life of hospitality, care of the needy, and leadership as bishop, give to your people by her intercession a generous spirit, so that with hearts made pure, we may show your love to all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Gospel reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than them? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Thanks be to God. Have you spotted the first signs of spring yet? I have noticed the stroke snowed upwards, clearer skies and daffodils in the shops and in the ground, which is always an indicator for spring coming. Particularly this past year, I have found it most beneficial to focus on the changing of dates, weeks, months, shifts in season, and seeing the time passing slowly after a particular dark winter and the difficulties brought about um, what, what brought about by what seems very slow weeks and ever-changing rules. The brightness of ahead, both weather related and moving forward into the world of a vaccine for the virus, is very much the light at the end of the dark tunnel. In this time of lockdown, over winter in particular, slowing down helps us concentrate on the day ahead, building routines and being part of the process. In our gospel today, the birds and the air are not worrying about the materials and the mechanics of everyday life. The reminder to take each day at a time is so helpful for us, at a time where we are unable to plan. Today's trouble is enough for today. When I first attended St. Brad's Church, it was in conversation with one of the members of our community that I first caught a glimpse of Celtic Christianity. 
The acknowledgement and conversation around Bridget of Kildare, how her name attributes um, as a saint have large overlaps within Christianity and paganism. The comfort in being able to discuss this was a great joy to me as it is something I've long wrestled with and have an interest in different spiritual understandings upon my journey. I have since noticed that instances uh, where connections with St. Bridges have often appeared. This particularly comes in the form of the lady with the fire and the flame in particular, helps me to feel grounded at the times that I have felt, felt disempowered. Within reflecting on my own journey, I acknowledge that my own spiritual retreat time is of much utmost importance. In this pause to celebrate St. Bride's Day, I would like to reflect on the time that I was on retreat in Glastonbury Town. Back in 2018, nearing the end of my theology degree, as part of my course, there was intentions of a field trip to Glastonbury Town, where our theology lecturers would team up with local pagan lecturers and give a joint tour of holy places in Glastonbury Town. For so many, the healing waters, Glastonbury Town. With its great significance to so many, healing waters, the chalice well, the holy grail, links with energies and shackles, links with the time of Christ and Joseph of Arimathea, um, which is mentioned in the hymn of Jerusalem. This trip, however, did not go ahead. So that summer, I took myself off on an independent retreat to go and explore. It was a place I had long had a calling to visit, and the time spent had a significant effect on my own spiritual well-being. St. Bridget of Kildare is said to have visited Glastonbury Abbey via Southern Ireland, and within the White Healing Springs there was a small Bridget Shrine, which means so much to so many with it being both pagan and a Christian retreat site. Um, where there was a small Bridget's shrine, complete with St. Bridget's crosses. It was beautiful, cold and calm. I particularly remember a time at Glastonbury Abbey grounds, a scorching hot day on Corpus Christi, with, as it turns out, an ecumenical diocesan pilgrimage, with processions, a busy, bustling um, atmosphere, which meant most of the town was blocked off to allow travellers. I remember a lovely elderly lady sat in the shade of the gazebo in the grounds of Glastonbury Abbey. She was staffing a huge array um, of a second-hand theology bookstore. I excitedly spoke to her about how enthused I was about the interfaith relations in Glastonbury. And she chuckled and replied, yes, dear, in Glastonbury, you can get anything healed. Later that afternoon, I spent some time praying in St. Patrick's Chapel, which is um, in the grounds of Glastonbury Abbey. This is where it gets a bit weird. I noticed, um, I noticed as a new congregation of, as, a, stop that again. I noticed as a new congregation member of Open Table at the time, the stained glass in the chapel dedicated, um, depicted, an angel with rainbow wings, which is on the front of your uh, liturgy today. So in the top left-hand corner, an angel with rainbow wings. I remember buying a postcard and sending it to St. Bride's Church, which is still in the office. It was only in this past week, I dug through my drawers and found a copy of the postcard of the stained glass of St. Patrick's Chapel. And on re revisiting uh, the description on the back, while sat with Laura on Zoom, I realised that the back of the postcard has the full list of saints depicted on the stained glass, namely St. Bridget, St. Michael and St. Dunstan. Little did I know back in 2018 that I'd be one day working for Team Parish of their names. The twists and turns of life that can sometimes take 
bring us back the grounding of the words in our gospel today, to not worry. This is very much easier said than done. Acknowledging the time of personal reflection and retreat and living our lives right now is of great importance. Having our faith in God and knowing that each day should be taken at a time to slow down and embrace the changing of this season. I think back to the conversation from one of my colleagues I met through my work in chaplaincy, um, which she's appropriately, appropriately named Sister Bridget, about we should follow the river. The river continues on its turns. It may be muddy some days, maybe covered in grass. There's days that we feel far away from it. But may we remember to have faith on our path. Amen. We now use this time for prayer. I will lead us in our intercessions and please feel free to write in the comments and we will spend some time um, to pause and pray together. Rejoicing in our fellowship of St. Bridget and all the saints, we make our prayer to you, our gracious God, for your grace revealed in St. Bridget and for all that inspires us from her life. Her gracious hospitality, faith and fire, for her insight in the, into the mystery of Christ, and for every way in which her faith continues to speak today, and following her good example, that we may hear afresh to the call of holiness of life. Lord, we pray for our candle of unity, for divisions that tear our world apart, for conflicts and unrest. May we live in your hope and have a righteous thirst for justice. That we may receive grace to grow in the likeness of Christ. That we may persevere in prayer and seek new light and truth from your word. That we may draw other people to the fire of your love. That we may be faithful to Christ even to death. In communion with St. Bridget and all the saints, let us commend the word and the mercy, the world to the mercy and protection of God. We now take a moment's silence to reflect on the prayers that are written on our comments as part of our community. Pray for one another. Amen. Our communion is always a virtual reality. At the house in Emmaus, when Jesus broke the bread, his disciples realized his presence with them, even as he vanished in their sight. When Thomas declared he would not believe unless he touched and felt the wounds of the crucifixion, Jesus invited him to touch and see and declared a blessing on all those who would not see and yet would believe. At the ascension, angels asked the disciples why they still looked up to the sky. They should expect now to find Jesus in everyday places. We celebrate our communion strangely in this season, and yet our confidence and hope is in the God who always is both a virtual and real presence. In bread, in wine, in water, in the spaces between us. 
the still centre at the heart of all our circling. Come living God, infuse our presence with your absence and our absence with your presence. Amen. Almighty God, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, take, drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. As we bring this bread and wine and remember Jesus' death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour out your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For all honour and praise belong to you, our divine source, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Divine Mother, Divine Father, to be in you is to be in heaven. May we hear the wonder that echoes your name. May we accept no rule but the rule of love. May we never tolerate the evil of hunger. May the hurts we cause be forgiven and the hurts we receive be healed. May we remember that we are fragile and cherish the life we share with all. For all love and life and power is the gift of the Spirit. Amen. So I invite you now, wherever you are, to eat or drink something in remembrance and share with us in our virtual communion. So our prayer after communion. Generous Lord, in word and Eucharist, we have proclaimed the mystery of your love. Help us to live out our days that we may be signs of your wonders in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Amen. So we now have our final hymn.
Marvellous uh, piece there that might be a familiar tune, but new words. So that was um, thanks to Malcolm Rogers for that. And uh, just before we come uh, to our blessing prayer, uh, I just want to mention some of the notices. Um, do join us after the service for our uh, Zoom kind of drinks after the service. Uh, the link hopefully will either be in the chat or it's, uh, yes, it is in the chat, lovely. And um, just keep your eyes out and sign up for the Lent courses that are coming up in a couple of weeks time. We have an art course, A Way Through the Wilderness, and we open table and running a course as well, which is, um, I think, going through the film, The Greatest Showman. Uh, Greatest Showman Alive? Greatest Showman. The Greatest Showman. Anyway, it's not, it's not that. <laughs> I'm saying the wrong thing. Okay, but have a look at the newsletter. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, so yeah, it's not that. But um, do look on um, our newsletter. If you're not signed up to our newsletter, you can just by sending us an email or contact us um, through our Facebook page as well. And unless there are any other notices, I'll say, <laughs> I won't say any more wrong notices. I'll just say, I'll just say a, uh, a blessing prayer for you all. And thanks for joining us today. Our God, you have not made us to cower in fear and self-doubt. You've made us to be fully alive, strong and brave in the center of your heart. May your blessings fan into flame what you have shared with our souls and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So thanks for joining us this morning and we'll hope to see you in a few minutes um, with some coffee. Bye-bye.